This, it seems, is the format of smartphones going forwards. OnePlus has nailed it, even though without the logo on the back, this really could have been an HTC or Huawei or Xiaomi or whatever device. A 5.5 inch AMOLED screen, aluminium unibody design with antenna lines across the back, slight camera bump and so on. Even the software is generic being more or less stock Android. Making me look ever harder for unique selling points. Why would you buy this over any other top Android phone? Aside from the rather special three position do not disturb switch, the monster six gigabyte of RAM inside, yes, and the general customizability of Oxygen OS, you have to look pretty darn hard for USBs. Or maybe you don't. The price is £309 in the UK and similarly cheap amount shipped to other countries from OnePlus's base in China. Considering the Snapdragon 820 chipset, all that RAM, a very decent camera with OIS, a very decent mono speaker, 4 amp charging over USB type C, that price is stunning. If you want true flagship performance but can't afford to buy a Galaxy S7 Edge, HTC 10 or iPhone 6S Plus, then the OnePlus 3 is possibly the best option. Despite the apparent blandness of the externals then, there's quite a bit to talk about. Can the functionality belie this £309 price point? Definitely, the components used by OnePlus get better and better. The chipset is the fastest there is, yet seemingly without a battery life penalty. The camera is terrific, right up there with the best in my testing. I got confused a few times between images and this and those from the Lumia 950XL, the existing champion, because those of the OnePlus 3 were better and crisper. There's only single LED flash, but the use of OIS means that exposures can be long enough for decent results. Add in 4K video capture if needed, and the OnePlus 3 camera definitely overperforms, which is always a nice thing to be able to praise a smartphone for. I mentioned a decent speaker for playing back music, podcasts and audio from your video, plus speakerphone and sat-nav use. Here's a demo at full volume. Bit of Eagles feel. It's not bad at all. I put it up with the... Uh, I put it up with the HTC 10. There's a bit of bass, there's plenty of top end and decent fidelity and volume. <laughs> the screen's interesting that it's only, I put only in quotes, 1080p. In fact, it's perfectly fine, of course. I only expressed surprise because of that six gigabyte RAM figure. My theory was that the latter was put in to help with putting the phone in a VR helmet, but 1080p will look pretty rubbish when viewed that close through two lenses and with the screen halved. OnePlus has been saying that the decision to go with 1080p and, and to also limit the number of running user applications to a dozen or so, despite all that RAM, was all about preserving battery life and they may have a valid point. I was easily getting a full day out of the OnePlus 3. If I'd been allowed to keep it, then once everything is settled, I think I'd expect a day and a half per charge. So I'm siding with OnePlus here. So why did they put in six gigabytes of RAM? My guess is it makes the phone future-proof. Certainly as more and more ambitious gamers come along, there'll be zero problem with running them at full tilt with free RAM, never an issue. In fact, you'd be able to load the hungriest game and still have those other 11 apps in RAM and they'd all stay in place, which is pretty cool. After Real Racing 3 on most Android smartphones, I'm used to everything else kind of loading from scratch again afterwards. Unusually for 2016, OnePlus has stuck to a sealed storage model with the SIM tray here merely being for two nano SIMs, but they've gone for 64 gigabytes internal and surely that's enough for all but the most hardened media and games monsters. So I'm okay with no micro SD card slot for once. In terms of software, it's Android 6.0.1, which is good to see and fully patched up to date with the Google June security updates. OnePlus calls it Oxygen OS 3.1.2, clearly based on the Android open source code. And then with all the Google apps licensed and the Oxygen extra settings tacked on. The latter are worthwhile. There's plenty that's interesting from a system wide dark theme, not as cool as you might think, since most of the apps themselves come up in white. Still a step along a helpful path to be able to swap the capacitive buttons and assign various long press and double tap actions, or even ditch these and use on-screen controls, though I don't know why anyone would since you then lose screen real estate. Then there are screen off gestures, double tap to wake, and lots of other niceties that we saw in the OnePlus X, which I loved back in the phone show last year. 
There's some bloat. Of course, gallery duplicates Google Photos and music duplicates Play Music. But the bloat isn't excessive and the inclusion of files and Android Pay here are helpful. The latter works with the NFC, whose antenna is set around the uh, camera island here. As usual for Oxygen OS, there's an extra shelf off the left of the main home screen with weather, reminders, frequent contacts and shortcuts to oft used applications. Some might find this useful. I think I'd go old school with Google now, as the folks at Mountain View intended. The Android 6 notification settings mean that the side slider, helpfully textured for better grip, can take you from all to just priority notifications to silent. By sliding the switch along, every Android phone, heck, every smartphone should have this. Although the form factor itself is just about perfect and the fit and finish excellent, I did find the thin edges and metal construction meant that the OnePlus 3 was hard to pick up securely from a desk and generally, well, very slippery. As with the iPhone 6 Plus and a similar unibody phones, you have to use this inside a case, probably TPU, which means that you get to handle cheap, grippy plastic and never get to touch the bare metal that you just paid for. I realise this is something of a cheap shot by me, but it's relevant. There are very few phones that can be carried in the hand all day without a case, and all of them have texture and or lots of plastic or rubber. This is the Marshall London. You can jiggle it in the hand, you can throw it around. It just never falls out. It's supremely tacky in more ways than one. Uh, so the premium metal construction here in just silver or gold and seal design is rather moot. You have to put a case on. I'm just saying... There's no pretense at waterproofing, probably for cost reasons. <laughs> All those seals and certifications cost money to implement, but the previous OnePlus design seemed okay with an accidental dunk in water and rescue, so I wouldn't worry too much on that score. Modern phone electronics do seem much more resilient than those of a, a decade ago. Though the usual precautions are advisable if this does get wet, of course, just in case. The battery is sealed in, of course, 3000 milliamp hours, but you do get to charge it quickly using OnePlus's proprietary dash charger, charger, which spits out four amps at five volts, i.e. 20 watts of power being thrust into your phone. 20 watts. Sadly, it's not Qualcomm Quick Charge compatible, but it's very compatible with your generic USB type C chargers at lower current, of course, so you're not totally out of luck if the supply charging block isn't to hand. One small note about the OnePlus 3 seen here, it comes from the factory with a screen protector fitted. This is probably intended to be kept in place, but it does rather collect fingerprints and feels horrible compared to glass. If this was mine to keep, then it would be off within the first 30 seconds. Why did a company do this? After all, it's Gorilla Glass 4 underneath, which is a million times stronger than the tacky plastic on top. In the last year, I've come back to value for money over and over again, pointing out how you don't need to spend a fortune to get a terrific smartphone and OnePlus has now nailed this concept with the three, showing what an absolute top spec unibody premium smartphone should cost. Anything more than £309 or local equivalent and you're paying for brand and for local support, which may well be enough for some people to be willing to rise to £500, £600 or more SIM free, or maybe a subsidised contract phone is just more convenient. But if you can possibly buy SIM free and then have a pay-as-you-go or rolling contract SIM, then it's very, very hard to look past the OnePlus 3 here. Definitely third time lucky for this Chinese company. Well done all round.